Hey, welcome again to this Bible study we've entitled, Who is Jesus of Nazareth? The most important question you'll ever answer in your life. And this time, as we continue our study, we're going to take a look at, at the roles or the official positions Jesus had as our Savior on this earth, often referred to as Jesus being our prophet, priest, and king. As always, I'd make sure that you uh, download the latest study guide so that you can keep us up to date and make sure that you share this information and use it not only to know your faith better, to be really uh, discipled in your faith, but also share it and in some cases probably have to defend it. So let's get started. We're at the section entitled uh, Christ's Office, His Official Position, and one of them was this. What did Jesus do? What did Christ do as our prophet? You might remember that God sent prophets in the Old Testament to proclaim his word, and sometimes they had prophecies about future events, but a prophet's chief job was to proclaim the message he received from God. In fact, in the New Testament, there is some spiritual gifts and listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Romans chapter 12. And one of those gifts is prophecy, which really means to proclaim God's word. Not necessarily to tell the future, but to proclaim God's message and to share his message. In, in the Old Testament, what did Christ, what did the prophets do and what did Jesus do to be the perfect prophet that none of the prophets in the Old Testament were? In Isaiah 61.1, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, it says, uh, While he was still speaking, a cloud enveloped them, and a voice from that cloud said, This is the Mount of Transfiguration, the Father says, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to his word. Mark chapter 1, verse 38, Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. John chapter 6, verse 68, Simon Peter answered Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Luke chapter 10 verse 16 says this, Jesus says, whoever listens to you, listens to me, the idea that we're sharing God's message. So whoever listens to you as you share God's word, they're actually listening to Jesus. Jesus says, whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, one of my favorite passages in Scripture, and it speaks to every Jesus follower who is studying right now with me. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So the answer you'll maybe want to write in on the blanks before you concerning uh, how did Jesus serve as our prophet as a prophet, Christ preached God's word, didn't he? Especially the, the good news of eternal life through faith in Jesus alone. Certainly, Christ continues to work as a prophet through you and me as his ambassadors, as his followers, as we share God's good news of forgiveness and salvation only in Jesus. So, uh, you and I are prophets with a small p in mind. We're not perfect, but we're able to share a message that tells people Jesus was perfect in their place. But Christ didn't only serve as our prophet. You might remember in the Old Testament, he also had high priests that served as a go-between uh, between God's people, Israel, through whom physically he would bring the Savior, and the Israelites themselves. But how did Jesus come and serve as the perfect high priest? Because the Old Testament high priests weren't perfect either. They needed to do sacrifices for themselves. Let's take a look. John chapter 1, verse 29 the next day, John, John the baptizer, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Remember what the Old Testament prophets did. They went ahead and oversaw the, the sacrificial system that was really to be a big arrow pointing to the perfect sacrifice that God would send in the form of his Son. Ephesians chapter 2, or 5, five verse 2 says this, And walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice 
to God. I had just alluded to that sacrifice that Jesus was for you and for me and for the whole world. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26 and 27 says this, Such a high priest truly meets our needs, speaking of Jesus, one who is holy and blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, those in the Old Testament, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator go between, between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. And just one more passage. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. John says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice that makes peace between sinful human beings like me and a, a, a holy God. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So an answer you can put down to the question, how did Jesus serve as our perfect high priest? You put this down, as our high priest, Jesus represented the whole world before God and sacrificed himself once, not again and again, as some teach every time the Lord's Supper is given. No, he sacrificed himself once for all. For the sins of all people. We call that the vicarious atonement, that substitutional atonement for the world. Jesus now pleads for us by virtue of a sacrifice that he's made for us. So you still have an advocate pleading for you, those of you who are children of Jesus, sons and daughters of the King, through faith. But Jesus also served in another way, not only a prophet, not only a priest, but he was the perfect king. You may remember that God's people had kings who ruled over them in the Old Testament and if you do your Old Testament history, you realize a lot of those kings weren't very good. None of them were perfect, but many of them were wicked and turned their back on God. And so Jesus comes here and serves as our perfect prophet, priest, and perfect king. Let's see how he did that. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. Often the kings in the Old Testament would lead the Israelites against their foes where Jesus came here and conquered our greatest foes, sin, death, and Satan himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56 and 57. Great passage here. Often you'll hear this uh, uh, during Easter celebrations or at a Christian funeral. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why a, a Christian funeral service is really a Christian victory celebration because one more Christian now has experienced the victory over death that Jesus has won for him or her. And that's what we really celebrate at a Christian funeral service. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says this, You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Keep, uh, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, speaking to pastors, but it also refers to people who have influence over others, which he bought with his own blood. And finally, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Great passage. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. So one of the things you might want to write down in the blanks provided is Jesus serves as our perfect king uh, by being the person who won the victory for us over sin, death, and the devil, that he might rule in the hearts of believers, of Jesus' followers like you and me, by his word. Jesus continues to bring new souls under his gracious rule and preserves them through the proclamation of his word through the word and sacrament, baptism and the Lord's Supper. So keep that in mind. Jesus serves in all those capacities, as you see in the illustration given you, given you in your um, study guide, the offices of Christ. He's anointed by God, chosen by God the Father. 
Uh, in the Old Testament, what did a prophet do? They taught God's word. They talked about the good news of a, a Savior to come. Well, Jesus came and what did he do? He taught that good news. He was that Savior to come. And he continues to now speak through believers like you and me as we share his word. Uh, what did the priests do in the Old Testament? They represented God's people. And they, they were part of the sacrificial system for sin. Jesus came, represented the world, sacrificed himself once for all, for all sin, and continues to serve as that mediator between us and God, God the Father. The Old Testament, kings fought for the people, and they ruled the people. What does Jesus do? Well, he won the victory for us. And he continues to rule in our hearts and rule over all things, ultimately for his good. So remember, you have a Savior who loves you dearly and who serves currently as your prophet, priest, and king. I hope that gave you a little better insight of the Savior who loves you and walks with you each and every day. God's blessings.